here we want to talk about solving logarithmic equations. And when we say logarithmic equations, I, I guess all we really mean is you're going to see a log in the equation when you start, and you're going to have to solve for x or whatever unknowns involved. And this is really a culminating or a culmination of some thinking that's been going on for a while. So we'll call this a warm up. Really, this first example really gets to the heart of the whole lesson. So um, the rest of it is just some, some details and special cases. You run into a situation like this. This is log base 5 of x equals 4. And it's very mysterious because you're, first, you're in your first chapter learning about logarithmic, lo logarithms. And it's very confusing what to do with this log base 5. And, and the important thing to understand is um, solving equations is often about doing the inverse of something. So you want to do the opposite operation. So when you learned about addition, you learned that, oh, the opposite operation is subtraction. Or if you learned about squared, you learned the opposite operation was square rooting. And the important moment in this whole lesson sort of happens right now, and it's going to be reiterated throughout the lesson, is that the inverse of log base 5 is 5 to the power of. So when you move log base 5 over to the other side, what you get is 5 to the power of what's there. And, and that looks completely mysterious um, when you're first learning about it. Just like uh, the little square root symbol was completely mysterious when you first see it until you understand that it's just the inverse of squared. That's all. And so here, the inverse of log base 5 is 5 to the power. Well, once you've done that, life's pretty easy. You, you, you punch 5 to the power 4 in your calculator and you get 625. Now, if that's sort of clear at this point, well, then you're in great shape. The rest of the lesson is just details. If it's not very clear at this point, don't panic. Watch a few more examples because I'm just going to be doing that move uh, again and again and again, basically. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Log base 2 of x plus 5 equals 7. We, we can see the, the, the plus 5 in there, and I'm going to have to subtract 5 at some point to do the inverse of adding 5. But that's not the first move. The first move is to peel back this log base 2. And so then you need to know, how do you do the inverse of log base 2? And the inverse of log base 2 is 2 to the power of. So when you bring it over to the other side, it becomes 2 to the power of. 2, two to the power of what? Well, th there's a 7 over there. So you, you get your calculator out, and you go 2 to the power of 7 is 128. And then you do the inverse of adding, which is subtracting. You subtract the 5 off and you get 123. So two examples to try to reiterate what, what comes up in the next slide here, which is that log base a and a to the power of are inverse of each other. They are their exact opposite operations. One undoes the other. This idea will give us a new way of solving exponential and logarithmic equations because you're just going to use an inverse. You now have an inverse to use. So first, let's consider how inverses have played an important role in solving equations up until this point. So we're going to review inverse operations from sort of the beginning, uh, you know, like grade 7, 8 thinking, all the way up to now, to really build some momentum to understand why log base A and A to the power of being inverses of each other is so important. So when we want to solve... equation that had addition in it, say x plus 3, what we did is we moved the adding 3 over to the other side, and it became subtracting 3, because subtraction was the inverse of adding. And then in, in reverse worked the same. If you had um, subtracting 7, when you moved over, it became adding 7. Uh, it, okay, it's just 7 plus 4, but it's, it's moved over, it's become positive there. Um, multiplication and division are inverses of each other. When you, when you go 4 times x is 12, and you want to do the inverse operation, why well, you divide by 4. And if you've got x divided by 5, and you want to do the opposite of dividing by 5, why well, you go 3 times 5, and you, you bring it over and you multiply by the 5. So then, then you could solve equations that had multiplication and division. Then the next one that was a little mysterious when you first learned about it, you learned squared and square root. And so you had x squared equals 9, and you bring it over and you make uh, it into plus or minus root 9. Well, when you first learn about it, you didn't do plus minus. Later on, you learned you really should do the plus minus if you're not in a Pythagorean theorem type situation. Now, this was this is very mysterious. Like uh, When you teach this in grade 8 and grade 9 to people who haven't seen it before, they say things like, oh, well, okay, so what happens? When it's squared, you just move it over and you write this little check mark looking thing called the square root symbol, and that gives you the answer. And the answer is, yeah, that's exactly what you do. Squared is Square root is the inverse of squared. And in, in example B, you can see if you've got a square root on one side and you want to move it over, it becomes squared. Those type of things sort of became familiar 
through the grades, through grades 9, 10, 11. But here's the big one for the day. Log base A and A to the exponent of are inverse of each other. If you've got log base 5, when you move it over, it becomes 5 to the power of. Exactly the way add became subtract and squared became square root. So it's just new. And so if it seems weird, well, yeah, it's weird because it's new. But this is the thing you have to learn is that they're inverse of each other. And here's another example, one that we haven't looked at today. If you've got 6 to the power of x, its inverse is log base 6. So you can work it the other way. Just like squared and square root, uh, on the top of the slide there, you can see squared becomes square root, or square root becomes squared. Here, a to the power of, or sorry, 6 to the power of can become log base 6. It's just a brilliant, powerful move after a whole chapter of logarithms that we've been working on. So this slide right here, if you want to circle one slide, this is the slide. You just put a big red star on it and say, this is what I have to get um, through into my, into my thinking is that when we want to move this back and forth, log base 5, when you move over, it becomes 5 to the power of. And then if you want to move over, say, 6 to the power of, you want to move it over, it becomes log base 6. Uh, the lesson could stop there, actually, really. From here on in, we just use special cases. So, again, if it's like, uh, I sort of get it, oh, just stay in for the special cases here because the special cases will just show you some extra little situations that might come up. So, conclusion, and this is just saying the same things I did in the previous um, examples, is if you want to reverse log base A, write the other side of the equation as an exponent to base A. So if you really want just sort of an instruction there, um, that, that's the sentence that gives you the instruction. And then the other way, if you want to reverse A to the power of, take the logarithm with base A of the other side. So examples, here we go. Examples heating up to special cases. If you have log base 7 of X equals 11 and you want to get to the X, so your log 7's in the way of that, you bring the log base 7 over and it becomes 7 to the power of 11. Now, if you put 7 to the power of 11 in your, in your calculator, you get some giant number. Uh, and there it is right there. Lots of times we will just use it as 7 to the power of 11 as opposed to writing all those digits out. It's, that's sort of a choice. and depends on the situation. New example here. 10 to the power of x equals 0 0.0002. Um, in previous um, uh, sections, we might have taken logs of both sides to to get through um, this example. But here now we've got a new way of thinking about it. The old way still works, but a new way of thinking of, of this is that 10 to the power of, when you move it over, it becomes log base 10. And log base 10 is the button everybody has in their calculator. Log base 10 is just the uh, common log. It's, it's so common, we just um, call it uh, plain log. And when you type it in, you'll get a very weird answer of negative 3.699. What does that mean? It means if you want to put an exponent on 10 to end up with 0 0.0002, you're going to have to put a negative exponent on there to make that 10 a lot smaller. And that's why you get a negative number there as you, as you go through there. Oh, and this is the part where I was going to talk about special cases. So I'm going to go from uh, A to G here and just keep heating up the situations and all the special little situations you might run into. So here's a situation that pops itself up when you've got a buried deep in a logarithmic equation then you just peel them back layer by layer and track down that x that is first we want to reverse this addition of 3.2 so we turn it into subtraction of 3.2 that's an old old move simplify that before carrying on down to 2.3 now we want to do the um, inverse of log but there's no base there and that's where some knowledge from previous sections is so important is that um, the inverse of log that's a log base 10. When, they, when there's no base written there, we mean log base 10. And it's because uh, log base 10 is so commonly used that lots of times we just leave the 10 off. And I know that's confusing when you first see it, but you'll get used to it. So it's base 10 we're talking about. When you bring that over, you get 10 to the power of 2.3. And then we've got the last thing we got to do is do the inverse of dividing by 1.8, which is multiplying by 1.8. And then the rest of your calculator can handle. You type in 1.8 times 10 to the power of 2.3, and you get approximately 359.15. That's been rounded off. Okay, on to another special case. Oh, well, a different, a different thing happens here that we got to talk about. So log base 6 of x plus log base 6 of x minus 5 equals 2. Here you're going to need log loss. When you have two separate logs like that, um, the log laws 
um, section really forces you to write as one single log. And at the time, it may just seem like a boring exercise to go, why do we have to write them as single logs? Well, the reason we have to do them as single logs is so that we can do the inverse of the log um, to isolate x. See here, right now with two logs like this, th there's no way really to do this question without log laws and to say, okay, well, if you're adding two logs together, you can change that to multiplying um, the two uh, bases, sorry, not the two bases, the two insides together inside of a single log. That, that's log law number one. It says, hey, if you've got addition, you can make it multiplication of inside one log, which is really handy here because now I can bring the log base six over. I can do the inverse of log base six, become six to the power of um, two, which is there. And the rest is just um, old quadratic type solving. Multiply up the brackets, bring it all to one side and factor that thing um, because it's a quadratic and quadratic the method basically is to make it equal to zero and factor it We saw that a lot in previous chapters and then I get my two answers of x equals 9 or x equals negative 4 Which by itself would be okay But logs you can't take logs of negative numbers just like you can't take square roots So one of these answers like happened in quadratics uh, Before lots of times one answer won't work and so if you take the 9 back and put it in the original equation, it will work because your log base 6 of 9 and log base 6 of 9 minus 5, which would be 4, that all works just fine. But if you put the negative 4 back in, you'll get log base 6 of negative 4, and that's not allowed. You can't take logs of negative numbers. It's not, well, not, it's not allowed. You, you can't do it. You can't get real answers out of that the same way you can't get square root of negative numbers. So um, one of these answers is inadmissible. So the extra little point here that you should not be, um, you should be subbing your answers back in to see if they work um, in the original equation. Um, okay, log base x of 0.04 equals negative 2. We want to move that log base x over, and when we move it over, we get x to the negative 2, which isn't really a special case of logs, it's just a weird setup of an equation. I just wanted to review that really quick because you might get these uh, equations with negative numbers in them. And, and there's lots of ways out of this situation. But one way is to go, well, um, negative exponents aren't really our favorite, so we'll write it using positive exponents. And so we write it as 1 over x squared. And then you can do some isolation. You can uh, cross multiply and isolate. Uh, in this case, um, we flipped both sides. We said, okay, 1 over x squared becomes x squared, and the other side becomes 1 over 0 0.04. But there's lots of options there. You could you could multiply through by x squared, and you get 0.04 x squared equals 1, and then divide by the 0.04. Lots of options there. Once you've got it to a positive exponent, the negative exponent makes it extremely difficult, but uh, a positive exponent is much nicer. And to the opposite of squared, we do plus or minus square root. And again, our calculator is very helpful here. And weirdly, we get nice numbers here, uh, uh, 5 and negative 5. Now, the big question is, can we take log base 5 of 0.04? And we sure can. Can we take log base negative 5? And no, we can't do log base negative. Um, that does not work. Log base negative just does not work. We don't use logarithms with negative bases. And why do we not use logarithms with negative bases? Um, well, they're just unpredictable. When you put negative number as the base and you start putting exponents on there, the answers can get positive, they can go negative, they really go crazy. And the big answer to that really is there's no really good real-world applications of negative bases uh, for exponential growth. Positive bases, we see positive um, bases for growth. We even see decimals, fractions, all sorts of things. But there's no real application for that because they're just not, they just don't model any real function. That's all. Log base 5 of 2x minus 4 equals log base 5 of 36. Okay, now this is another kind of special case, but this is the easiest of those kind of special cases. The idea being here is we want to, we see these, this equation, we see it log base 5 and log base 5. They both have log base 5s. So that part of the equation is already equal. So log base 5, we're not even really worried about that. Both sides are log base 5, and when that happens, and you've got log base 5, and on both sides like that, you can just drop the log base 5. That part of the equation is equal. Now we just need the inner parts to be equal, and you get 2x minus 4 equals 36. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but it's a huge deal in the thinking of logarithmic equations because if we can get both sides as log base something, and in this case it was 5, of, of uh, whatever's there, 
then you can just drop those and get rid of the logs, and then you've got a pretty simple equation to solve. Move the negative 4 over, divide by 2, away you go. So that question leads to this question, is that what if they're not all together as one log? What if we have two separate logs on one side, like this one has log base 3 of 12, minus log base 3 of x, and that's where those log laws are so important. So if you've skipped over the log laws, it's going to come back and haunt you right now because you have to know log law number two that says, oh, well, if you're subtracting two separate logs, you can put it together as one log, but make a division like this. And once you've done that with your log law, then what you've got is a great situation where both sides are log base 3 of something, and if both sides are log base 3 of something, we can just drop the log base 3s. Uh, why are you allowed to do that? Well, there's two reasons. One is that, listen, we need this equation to be equal. The log 3s are already equal, so if we can get the insides to be equal, then we'll have a working equation. The other reason we can do that, uh, and this is a much tougher reason to understand, is basically to get rid of the log base 3. We're just going 3 to the power of both sides, and that cancels out the log base 3. That's another way to think about it, and that really is important, and it's, it's a big idea. I'm not sure we need to be able to see it that deeply in this course necessarily, but that, that's really what's going on here. Uh, the, the first reasoning works perfectly well in this course, which is that, hey, the log 3s are equal on both sides, so that's taken care of in my equation. Now I just need the insides to be equal. I get 12 over x is 3. A little bit of isolation, move the x over and divide by 3, and I get my answer of 4. Which you can plug back in to check, by the way. Your calculator will check those every step of the way. Real nice on, on quizzes and tests and assignments and those type of things. You just take that 4, sub it back into the original equation and make sure it comes out to be the right thing. <clears throat> Two more to go. Oh, another log application here. Both of these sides uh, are log. Uh, which, which is log base 10, uh, but two separate logs on the left-hand side, so it would be nice if we could write it as a single log, which was, hey, that uh, um, log law homework was all about getting it as a single log, which seemed boring at the time, but so important now. We want to write this left-hand side as a single log using log laws, and log laws say if you're adding two logs together, you can make it into one log except multiplication. And then we're in the same situation we've been in the last couple of examples, which is both sides are log base 10 of something. So if they're both log base 10 of something, that part is already equal. We can drop that part of it and just be left with what's inside the logs. Or the much deeper understanding is to go on the next step, we're going to go 10 to the power of both sides, and that'll cancel out that log base 10. Here, I did the expansion inside first to take care of that expansion. Uh, no reason to do that really. You could do that expansion afterwards, but I expanded out the brackets there. And so before I dropped the logs, I did the expansion. Uh, so uh, you may want to do the expansion inside first. You may want to uh, drop the logs first and then do the expansion whatever way works for you. Then a quadratic where our goal is to get zero on one side, factor that thing, and then check the answers to see if they work. Uh, put five up into that original equation. I'll get uh, log base log base 10 of 7 and log base 10 of 1. So that works, that's fine. But when I use the negative number, um, it doesn't work because I'll end up taking logs of negatives. Last one. It's actually an example straight from um, other um, sections, and uh, you, you might have already seen how to solve this another way, and if you stick with that way of solving, hey, that's no problem. Uh, you, you would take log of both sides, and then you bring the x down using log of log 3. That's all great. I love all of that method. That, that is fine. But here's a new method to handle the situation, is to say, okay, well, the inverse of 5 to the power of is log base 5, which, if you have a calculator that can handle it, you're already done. You type in your calculator log base 5 of, of 108.5 and you get your answer, but you don't need a special calculator. We have uh, this move, which is that anytime you want to type it in it using log base 10, you just uh, go log 108.5, which is the inside of the log, divided by log of the base, and you'll get the right answer. And here you punch it in and you get 2.91. Is that better than the other method? Oh, I don't know. But they're pretty they're pretty equivalent, but it is a, a, another, another way to handle it um, if you like the tidiness of that. I'm not part of this course, but a special challenge one to do here. Um, it's not that bad, actually, but it does take some thinking here when the bases are different 
Um, it, it may seem like you got a big problem in your hands, but uh, just think it over a little bit and, w w and think about which log you really want to move here and uh, to get the X by itself and, and you shouldn't have much trouble maneuvering that around. And as a special bonus, then once you get an X value you think is right, try plugging it back into this equation to make sure it checks out. Um, so some extra little um, work there for your enjoyment. Not a setup for stuff that's going to be on tests and exams in this course, but uh, it's there for your uh, to play around with. If you're asking the question at the end of this, well, what happens if the log, if the bases aren't the same? It's not really a big problem. We just don't really go there in this course because lots of things we'll run into won't be the same base. Chances are when you're doing a biology or chemistry problem, you're going to be working on the same base anyways on whatever base you choose. So it's not, not, not a big concern. This is our basis usually. Okay, that's all for now. Have a great day.